Neighbors are trying to sue Laguna Seca Raceway for being a racetrack. Yeah, you heard me right. There's some NIMBY neighbors outside of Laguna Seca Raceway that want to sue the racetrack for being, well, a racetrack, kind of its intended purpose. NIMBY, of course, means not in my backyard, and there's tons of them. There's tons of them in your neighborhood, your city, your town. They're all around you. They live amongst us. They typically like to pretend to be progressive. They love a good HOA. They're the type of people that want affordable housing, but then when you want to build it in their neighborhood, they're like, no, 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 not in my backyard. You're not going to do that. And they're the same type of people that move in next to an airport and complain about airplanes wanting to land there, move next to a theme park, and they're like, those people scream really loud on roller coasters. Or maybe they buy a house on a golf course, and they're like, people keep hitting their golf balls into my backyard. Can you believe the audacity of them? You know the type of people I'm talking about, and these are the same type of people that now have built houses next to Laguna Seca Raceway, which has been there since 1957, and want to complain about the noise of the racetrack. They say that the racetrack has become too noisy, there's too much traffic associated with it, that the track is now being used 340 days out of the year, that it's not the races that are happening there, the IndyCar race and the IMSA race, but rather the track day rentals that happen there. And let me just preface the fact that all the track day rentals there are held to a strict decibel level of, I believe it's 100 decibels or 101, and it's a two strike and you're out type of thing. You get that second strike, you're done for the day. It, sucks if you paid for it. So they are, you know, mitigating how much noise is being heard by the neighbors. But again, I have to stress, these people built and bought houses next to a racetrack that has been there since 1957. And of course, there's tons of people watching this right now going, that doesn't matter. It's happened to tons of racetracks around the country. And you're 100% right. We've seen plenty of racetracks get taken out by people moving next to a racetrack and then complaining about said racetrack. It's like moving next to a railroad track and being like, Union Pacific, you got to move these railroad lines. I don't know if you know this, but it's noisy. Yeah, you bought next to it. What did you expect to happen here? Moving next to a river and it floods and you're like, we got to move the river. Can you believe it flooded right here? Uh -huh, I can. It's a river. It happens. Same thing with the racetrack. We saw it just happen in Denver to the drag strip in Bandemir. That's gone now. It will now be a housing development. We've seen it happen with a lot of drag strips around the country. One of them in Arizona, which I believe did just come back after they decided not to build a highway right through there because there wasn't anywhere else to apparently build a highway other than that perfectly manicured quarter mile strip uh, of asphalt. But we see it happen to oval tracks, especially short tracks all over the country. Millbridge just last year, the dirt track that is you know outside of the Mooresville area where tons of NASCAR people race at, had to deal with their own complaints from neighbors that say that the racetrack's too noisy. There's too much traffic that's coming in and out of there. If you follow Cletus McFarlane um, on his YouTube channel, he's facing that same sort of issue with the Freedom Factory. Granted, there haven't been any complaints lodged yet because the houses are still being built, but he knows within the next year or two that he's going to have to face a battle just like that because, again, they built a house next to a racetrack that already existed and they want to complain about it. It's like people in Indianapolis living there in the neighborhood surrounding the racetrack and being like, this racetrack's just too noisy. I mean, the racetrack's been there since 1909. What do you expect? So let's get back to Laguna Seca real quick. The neighbors there, the Highway 68 Coalition, as they call themselves, at least it's better than the CARE group, which should technically be Cairn in Nashville, except they conveniently left out that Nashville part of the acronym. The Highway 68 Coalition says that the track has become too noisy. They want it limited. They want it shut down this and that. Well, here's the thing about Laguna Seca Raceway that I don't know if tons of people know. The racetrack is now owned by Monterey County. So the local government owns the racetrack. And based off of the, the quote that they gave the San Francisco gate, they absolutely do not care about this at all. They said it will not affect their 2024 events. They expect it to be resolved quickly. They don't expect any changes to come from it, which I absolutely love. At the same time, these are very wealthy neighbors. If you've ever been to Monterey, you know the type of homes that are around there, the type of people that live there. It's expensive, it's pricey, these people have money, and they are the type of people that don't get told no very often, or ever. Here's the thing that Laguna Seca has going for it. In 2022, it brought in $246 million worth of revenue to Monterey County. And unless those neighbors want to subsidize that $246 million, the tra racetrack's not going anywhere. Racetrack will continue to exist exactly where it is. Could you see a number of track days being limited from 340 down to 300, 250? 
Possibly. But this racetrack is absolutely not going anywhere until they find a revenue generator that can make up for that 200 and almost $50 million. Because at this point, those neighbors, they're not coughing up that amount of money every year. So if you want your taxes to go up, sure, then maybe you can get rid of the racetrack. But at the same time, I really wish racetracks around the country, specifically older ones, would look at getting historic landmark markers placed on them so that things like this can't happen. Nashville residents, of course, voted uh, in favor of the Nashville Fairgrounds to make sure that they couldn't tear down that racetrack. Now, of course, there is still opportunity for that to be changed, and that's an ongoing battle there as well. I mean, they do have five Formula One tracks around there, so why would they need the fairgrounds? At Laguna, there's not five Formula One racetracks around there. At least we haven't heard that at the town hall meetings yet. But the next time council meets, maybe there are five Formula One tracks we're just not aware of yet, so they can go use one of the other ones. But for Laguna Seca, it's an integral part of that community. There's one resident who's lived there for 22 years who said, uh, quote, I haven't experienced the nerve-shattering noise that some of these neighbors have. So these are really just people that want to complain. And again, you built and bought homes next to a racetrack that's been there since 1957. And I'm willing to bet almost all of them, if not all of them, have not lived there since 1957 because you'd be pretty old at this point. You, I mean, assuming you bought it when you were 20 years old and then 63, 66, you'd be 86. Yeah, so you're looking at being like 86 to 90 right there. Just doing some quick math in my head right here because why not? But... It's really unfortunate that these NIMBYs continue to make headlines for being just... It's just really unfortunate that these absolute NIMBYs continue to make headlines for being just unbearable type of people. You bought next to it, you knew the noise that was going to come with it, and if you didn't, that's on you for not doing your own research. Again, it's like moving next to an airport and complaining about it. Or, in the situation like you have in Denver, people continue to build homes closer and closer to the airport, and they continue to complain that the airport's loud. You moved into one of the busiest airports in the United States, and now you want to complain that it's loud. Airport's right there. You can see it. Same with the racetrack. Racetrack's right there. And most of these homes aren't, like, on top of the racetrack. They're hearing the noise echo through the valley and, you know, over the hillsides. And, again, it's not going to be this, as one neighbor said, nerve-shattering noises that's going to disrupt your life. Is it a nuisance from time to time? Maybe, but if you're inside your house, majority of the time you're not going to be able to hear it. Let me know in the comments, would you complain if you live next to a racetrack? I already know the answer to that. It's rhetorical. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard. Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.